Hello and welcome to Rugby Roundup. Coming up, we pick the key men ahead of the Championship playoffs. Hello and welcome to Rugby Roundup. I'm Chrissy Savas and I'm joined in our Fort Dunlop studios by rugby correspondent Brian Dick. Hello, Brian. Hi, Chrissy. Well, what's to kick off their Championship playoffs? at the weekend at Bristol, and you've picked out Andy Good as your star man. Tell us why. Yeah, well, uh, Andy uh, Andy Good has come into the into the side this season, and um, Worcester have got some very, very big matches coming up now. They've, they've got six playoff games and hopefully a, a semi-final and, and a two-legged final, so that's nine games. Um, we are really are, you know, what people say is the business end of the season, and, uh, and Andy Good has been there, seen it, and done it. He's, he's played for England, he's won Heineken Cups, he's won Premiership titles. There is no better person to be driving the Worcester bus at the moment when you know when the, the traffic's going to be getting getting heavy than, than Andy Good. Well, he spoke to Andy Good. Let's hear from him now. It's always been pretty switched on. Um, the key thing for us is we're now in another sort of mini league system, um, and uh, you know while we know that the, the the pressure is increasing now every game, um, the players are you know, got a good strong playing squad here that um, you know with some good leaders in that. Um, you know, know when to ramp up the pressure and when to you know, keep a cool head on everything. And uh, you know, there's uh, some experienced heads there that have managed to do that pretty well. Yeah, you, know, you can't compare this sort of game to a Heineken Cup quarter, semi, or final or anything like that. But in the same breath, um, you know, when you look at the magnitude of getting Worcester back into the Premiership, that's as big as a uh, you know right now as as Leicester trying to win a Heineken Cup in that respect. You know, Worcester need to be. Beal and Endel being the Premiership, and our, our sole goal is to win the win the Premiership. So that's you know in terms of importance, they're both as important. But in terms of magnitude of game, obviously it's not as big a game. Well, that was Andy Good. So apart from experience, what else will he bring to the team? Well, he's he's an absolute first-rate goal kicker. You know, they've uh, arguably they'd still be in the Premiership if they'd been able to recruit him at any stage in the previous six years. Uh, the, the struggle with their goal kicking and game management when they were when they were in that division. Good's come come down and, and he's just elevates that team. They're twenty percent a better side when when he plays through the goal kicking, through the game management. When when it gets difficult, he'll he'll be kicking the corners, keeping the pressure on so that big Worcester pack can can start squeezing the pips out of their opponents. So Worcester's chances? Well, you'd have to say they're hot favourites to go up. Um, they they should win all nine. Um, that there's there's always a, a, a potential for a slip because they've got this, they should get through the playoffs. They'll have a one leg semi final now. Anything can happen in, in 80 minutes. The two leg final Exeter beat Bristol last season, so you know that's that's far from a certainty as well. So so it's it's a should and a probably will, but it's not a definite. Okay. Now let's move on to Mosley, and you picked up Bevan Armitage for Mosley. Yeah, he's a, a he is a later dis- or a, he came to the side midway through the season when it became. Patently obvious that they, they were lacking in, in at the outside centre spot. Um, he's he, he's a very direct and uh, when he's got the ball he's very direct and, and gets gets him over the gain line. When he hasn't got the ball, that that, that troublesome outside centre number 13 berth was uh, he's really shored it up before he came into the side. Uh, they they were leaking tries for, for fun, you know. Guys were scoring hat tricks all over the place on them, and and uh, and whilst you could say, yeah, it was the wingers that were scoring the hat tricks, a lot of the issues were, were coming coming because they were so porous just inside the wingers, and and the defenders would be sucked over. So he's come in, and nobody scored a hat trick against Mosley in since he's been in the side. Um, he's he's given them a real target, and and he's getting them getting them on the front foot. So you know, had they had him earlier in the season. Um, then you know you could you could say those three look at those two of those draws and maybe they become wins and there's a bonus point here or there and suddenly we're on we're on the cusp of the top eight again and it's a very different season. Interestingly, you know Mosley chose not to spend all their cash in, in the summer. They decided to uh, to keep their powder dry a little bit so that bef- so that they'd have have some resources to bring new players in just before the playoffs. I wonder, you know, if they, if they missed a trick in, in leaving such a big hole um, at the start of the season, which is really when they when they fell behind. Well, Mosley start off their campaign at Plymouth. How do you think they'll tackle this match? Well, they were they were there a few weeks ago in in a regular season match, and they drew six all. It was uh, it was a pretty horrendous match. It was it was very windy, very rainy. Um, I, I think Plymouth have they've tried to pull a little bit of a fast one. You know, they've, they've tried a, a bit of psychological warfare by by announcing the game on a Friday night. Um, the place will be absolutely packed. Um, that they'll, you know, it'll be a fresh, a fresh, clean slate um, at, the, at the start of the playoffs. So, I, you know, I think Plymouth, uh, 
Plymouth really will come at Mosley, so that, you know they're going to have to be really on their game for the first 40 minutes. And you know, we've we've noticed all season long that, that you know when Mosley aren't on their game, they they can leak points like like they're going out of fashion. When they are on their game, they're, they're a pretty decent outfit. So those 30 those first 40 minutes for me are absolutely crucial. Finally, on to bees, they start their campaign at home to Isha. You've picked out Leo Halavatel, haven't you? I have. He's uh, he's just announced that he's uh, going to be leaving Bees at the end of the season. He, he signed a two-year um, deal with with London Irish to play in the Premiership. Now this this is incredible, really, because it's, it's only 12 months since he moved from back row into prop. He's, he's only been playing the position at which he's now considered good enough to 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 be a professional. Um, he's only been playing it for a year. Um, that's that's maybe. About 30 starts, and probably not even that. Uh, he's he, he really has come on, and, and bees have, you know, they're not a full, they're not a, a scrum dominated side, but they they've built a lot of of what they do around the fact that he's given them that stability at the scrum. He's a he's he's a, a very very strong, powerful man. Um, you know, the, the back row pace has gone clearly because he's, he's had to he's had to change his diet and he's had to bulk up, but he 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 really has. Almost recreated that side, you know, the, the side that was uh, that was very cavalier last season, the one the one that was throwing the ball around and, and difficult to contain. They're much more structured now, and Halavartau's um, development in the in the front row has, has been probably seventy or eighty percent of the reason for that. Now let's hear his thoughts. In the last maybe four or five weeks, we have like progressed towards uh, with each game we're playing. I think we're we're, we're getting to a stage where we're trusting each other and uh, we're, uh, yeah I think we've, like, we've got like, um, like patience and everything you know like uh, I think we're more as a team I think as well like as, uh, so after, like the last four or five weeks we have got a lot better like. That was Leo Halvatel and he seems very positive, Brian, doesn't he? Yeah, he's uh, he's got a good reason to be. To be fair, a lot of the uh, a lot of the points he makes there about um, about having greater depth in the squad and having having a settled side that they're all very valid. Uh, of the of the four playoff teams, the the one that causes me least worry is, is Bees, I think, and and that's that's maybe slightly odd because they finished bottom of the table. They they had the fewest wins, but you just feel that they've, they've got this latent ability and, and, and I think it will come out in, in these high pressure situations um, albeit you know they similarly on, on the flip side of it they, they have the worst record of uh, in, in, in the games against the other three three sides of anyone so you know it's right to be positive but there's also lots of work to be done for them So a lot of rugby action this week There is yeah we're in Plymouth on, on Friday and then uh, at Damson Park on, on Sunday so, and Interestingly, a lot of the uh, th- this season the points have carried over from 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 the regular season, um, and you know two results either way, and and, and any advantage that pe- teams could have carried in could could be completely uh, could have been completely negated by that stage. So it is it's a it is a fascinating weekend. Great, thanks, Brian, and thank you for watching. We're back next week with analysis of those games. Bye for now.